There are two dates that put both hope and fear into the mind of all river anglers here in the UK. The start of the river season and the end of the river season. It's the end of the river season, the last day last year. I thought I've got to go out and I wanted to catch, yes, some of those guys. I caught the weather so wrong, it was unbelievably a disaster waiting to happen. But I drove and drove and drove and there's stuff in here that might just interest you river anglers. Well, it's welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show and trust me, you are welcome to it. It's the last day of the fishing season in the UK on the rivers at the moment, as I speak, 2019. We have what's called a close season, so anglers in, uh, in other parts of the world know that we have a close season um, at, to allow the fish to spawn, reproduce, re basically rest. And I think that's a good thing, give them a good rest. And I wish it applied to lakes as well, like it did do many years ago. Um, you know, you couldn't fish for three months. It gave everything a rest. And we all went trout fishing and sea fishing. It's the way it was. So you still went fishing. But I've come down. It's the 14th of March. The season finishes at midnight tonight. You cannot fish on the 15th of March. So I've come down to the river. Done 60, 70 miles. They said, come down. Nobody will be down there. It's flooded. It's windy. It's horrible. Uh, it's a two-swim wonder. And there's two anglers in the swim. I'll have a quick look, but I... <laughs> I don't fancy dropping in anywhere there to be honest, I'll have a look. It's going to be noisy, it's going to be windy, it's absolutely howling the wind. The river's up, I'm going to try and shield the mic as best I can. This must be some form of, uh, I won't touch it, I might get electrocuted, like a river gauge there. And you can see it's absolutely boring down. This is a Hampshire Raven. And I'd envisage fishing a strip here between that bridge up there and this bridge here. And the fish back up there when it's flooded and you can get some good dace fishing and that's why I wanted some dace on the float but there's an angler there and an angler there so that's me done absolutely stuffed there's nowhere else down here there's a little pool there I could fish and I think there's one just down over here I'll have a quick look but it looks like looks like I'm in at the deep end okay people there is actually a bridge here what a fairness I know they fish this stretch here in that corner just there, there's a little bit of slack you can see. But down here I can see rubbish and stuff, so it could be snaggy. But it is literally a one float or one ledge of wonder. Boily, swirly, I don't really like the look of it. What a shame I've come all this way. You know, there could be fish. I've fished here before. There could be fish there. It probably is, but I don't really fancy. It's just pushing through a, a bit too much. And there you can see the river gauge. So... I've no idea whether it's rising or falling. I have the feeling it might be rising, but it's absolutely walloping through there. And uh, I was here for about five minutes when I parked the car and looked. I haven't seen those guys catch anything yet. So what to do, what to do? Life is fraught with problems when you're fishing on the last day of the season. What I could do, just as a point of interest, I could go down to the Hampshire Raven further down. This is a Hampshire Raven further up. I could go right down to the bottom of this place called the Royalty Fishery. We could go down there and there used to be a couple of big salmon in a room down there. I wonder if they'd let me film them and somebody told me they've got some antique tackle there now. So that would salvage something for me. So let's have a run down. I mean, I'm, it's only another 10 miles or so. I might as well do that. And at least uh, I can show you some fish even if I can't catch it myself. Right. Another 30 miles done. I am... In a car park, just about to my favourite place, actually. Yes, the car park. Just about to go and get some uh, dosh for a ticket. And um, I'm going to try a river here. Now, the difference here is, I don't know, I haven't seen it yet. I'm hoping I'm in the right car park, but I'm on the downhill side of the hill, so the river's generally fine I'm at the bottom end of the uh, hill. Don't find many rivers on the top of the hill. And um, I'm going to give it a go, just see what I can catch. Can I have a go float fishing? It has stopped raining. But it's very, very windy, and I'm going to give it a go. And fingers crossed, I've got maggots from Davis's Tackle. I really enjoy going through that old museum, by the way. But I'd like to finish off somehow, but at least showing you guys a fish. Surely I must catch one fish on the last day of the fishing season. This river is uh, a different one. This is a river itching, and uh, it's a chalk stream. So it will be up, it will be pushing, but I don't think it will be coloured. That's my hunch, and that's why I've driven all this way. Right. See you on the riverbank. So the wind is absolutely howling, 40, 50 miles an hour. 
and it might be the last day of the season but there's still anglers out here giving it a go hardy souls and you can't believe i went all the way down to ringwood there be nobody out they said and yes there's people in the only two swims that's on that tiny little stretch here little free stretch but anyway i've taken the trouble i'm down this far I might as well drive all the way down here and i'm at the royalty fishery here and this used to be a well they called it the rod room but inside that rod room there are an absolute amazing number of old tackle items and it really does take me back it's a piece of history it's well worth you guys to you know, stick with me um, I'm hoping hoping I might be able to pick something up maybe some grading off uh, there's a free stretch of uh, I think it's a river itch in on the way back I've got a couple of other free stretches I might be able to go to but basically you know I'm looking at this this is really pushing through here it's very very uh, colored and up but of course you've got to give it a go so anyway, let's get in here let's have a look see what's in here Years ago, I mean, I used to fish here in 1965, and it was nothing like this. I had the big salmon casts there. My God, look at all the old tackle here. As an old tackle collector of yesteryear and having fished here many years ago, it's great to see something like this. Don't know where to start, people. Really don't know where to start. Let's have a look in here, look. All don donations of old bits of tackle. I used to have an old fluger like that, an old fluger. In fact, I'm not sure that isn't a fluger. Now, you previously uh, might have seen in our pallet cabin when I talked about the old tackle, I had rods and reels. Well, here it is, and absolutely, I'm just going to pan through all this, look. Just give you an idea. This says, this one here, look, a keeper's, let's read this, because that's interesting. A keeper's boat hooked and landed by rub stack while fishing Dick's Hole on the 20th of February 2008. The boot dates from around 1900. Look at that. I wonder if the angler was dragged in by a monster barbel. Interesting stuff, people. It's well worth coming uh, down in. You can't just wander in. You have to go and... Uh, it's, it's only if you've got a ticket, as I understand it. Some of the history in here is impressive. 34-pound pipe there on a lure. Not a bad old fish. Not a bad old fish. Fred Buller. Famous name from the past. There's an old black and white picture of a big salmon there, look. Now they used to get, just so you people know, I mean I fished here, I think the first time I could fish here was 1965. And I had, just literally the other side of that bridge, fishing with my dad, I wasn't even driving, um, a six pound barbel on a float. I might be able to drag the slide out of that one. And that was on a centipede. I didn't know what I was doing, how that, I got there fishing, I don't know. And that sort of sold me and I spent many, many years down here fishing with my dad and uh, a lot on my own as well. And obviously late 60s, it was very, very famous. Now, just so you know here, barbel. It says the record's obviously gone now. It's full of, they're all full of boilies and they're monster fish. I don't know what it is, 20 pounds now. But look, that's when I was down here, 1965. I fished with Jack Harrigan. That Jay Harrigan is Jack Harrigan. And he had a swim named after him, which is on the opposite side of what's known as the Pipe Bridge Swim. Good Lord, look at this salmon there. 50 and a half pounds for Muddyford. My goodness, I hope you guys can see the size of that fish there. A lot of old pictures here. A lot of old pictures. Should have bought my reading glasses, shouldn't I? Now, as I was younger people, the older names won't mean anything at all. Look at this catch of barbel. Best barbel was 10 8, best charge 5 pounds. Dave Stewart, I've uh, met Dave Stewart before. Um, I think Dave Stewart, correct me if I'm wrong, had the last £40 Avon, bar, uh, Avon salmon, I think. I think it was the same. If that's the same Dave Stewart, I've no idea. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is a silly mullet, people. Look at the size of that mullet. I cannot believe the size of this mullet. <laughs> Look at this. 2014, <laughs> £10. OMG. I did fish once. I fished, I think it was in a lagoon, was it Abathor? Um, it might have been the, the station, it's, it's like a power station is there, there, a lagoon at the back of that, and a guy was catching mullet to uh, 10 pounds back of this lagoon. I went down to do a fishing article with him and uh, we didn't catch, no. As soon as you get the cameras out, everything changes. Let's look at some of these uh, pictures. 20 pound pike now. One of the pike I had was, um, 
24 and a quarter pounds on a worm just over if you guys can see it through there on those piles there I think it was 24 and a quarter pound on five pound line and a worm some fit and on the old Avon rods I'm still using got original scales here look how can you imagine taking these carp fishing and there's <laughs> there's the weight you had to have uh, 14 pounds that would be what that would be what the original Bible record would have weighed because I think there were three fish held one was put it by Wallace 14 pounds was it 14 six another one was a salmon angle I think it was I might have been foul hooked oh there's Jack Hilton I know Jack Hilton's picture from years, years ago at seven pounds from the ditch swim on the royalty Jack Hilton but look at the quality of that fish back then 1970s I was fishing it at the same time scary stuff very scary stuff a lot of, a lot of names I recognize it's an amazing number of pictures here some of you older guys probably remember some of the names as well I'm just gonna walk along look at the old Mitchell reel here beautiful and you used to get Mitchell 410s was the one and this is a split cane rod so that would have a core to it and then they they split this cane apart and then re-glue it so it had movement in it and made it I think it made it a little bit soft did it make it stiffer or softer but you always had to have these intermediate whippings all the way up there you had to have them all the way up there I think that, that keeps it all together because it's split apart and then re-glued boys this is my biggest salmon Look at that, a eh? 49 pounds. My claim to fame was fishing on the Fraser River with a guide, hooked a big salmon, he put it at 60 pounds. Look, not an Atlantic, Chinook, what they call a Chinook, yeah, big spring salmon or king salmon. I fought it for half an hour, it took me over half a mile down the river in the heavy river uh, current. He got it right over the rims of the net and I walk backwards fighting it all the time because I didn't drop to get any more pressure on it. If I drop, the fish would be away again. So I just walked back and I must have been 20, 30 yards from him and he had it across his arms in the rim of the net and he just went folded in the net and then flipped out again. And that was it. Off it goes. Busted line, I think it was. But what a fish. So I was nearly famous with a 60 pound salmon. Other than that, I've had him over 30 anyway. So, but you know, you look at the size of some of these fish. 1951, look. Mr. Howard had both of those, I seem to recall. 41 and three quarters. 41 and three quarters, that's amazing, look. Edwards Pool and Haters Pool. I mean, it's not going to happen nowadays, boys, is it? Lots and lots of salmon. Here's an old, a thrown salmon there, look. 48. 48 and a quarter pounds from the throne. That's a river, you know, quite close to here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... Um, it's more famous for big grayling, I think, really, than anything else. Good old picture. I know. I remember that picture. When I walked in, I thought that's Ken Keynes, who was the bailiff here when I was here. He was one of the bailiffs myself, my dad. And that is, oh, gee, look at this. Even if I'm not going to catch anything today, guys, it's just worth coming down to look at this. Look at that fish. I cannot believe that. Christchurch, 2001 on a dead bait, <clears throat> 36 pounds. I mean, that is just ridiculous, isn't it? They've got a bass down here, that's weird. I have heard of bass being caught up there. I heard one about six pounds. This is 13 pounds nine. There, caught by John Dennis on a crystal minnow. So the bass do run up here. You get mullet up here as well, you get some very good mullet up here, and of course you get sea trout as well as a salmon. Some of the tackle here, people. Bamboo poles. I used to have some of these, and I did sell them off in the end. So it's the original sort of roach pole, and um, all these have got... Somebody's taken a lot of trouble to do this, to be honest. Yeah, a roach pole's over a hundred year old, made a tonking cane, built by Sour Butts, which I do remember. Company started trading in 1771 and finished in 1984. And it's just out of interest that part of the pike. Heaviest, top 10 heaviest recorded pike from Hampshire Raven. 
There you are, 38, 5, 37, 37, 37, 1, 37, 36, 36, 36, 36, 35. All up and down. And so river pike can grow very big, or indeed used to. Now they've got a fan system working in as well. A load of old books. Angler's Bedside book, just so you know, guys. When I was at school, I think I was about 12 years old, they used to give prizes, and I won one of those, an Angler's Bedside book, for the most progress at school in 3A2. And I can assure you, the Vermeer, <laughs> the progress went very, very much downhill. I just went to work and started work at 14, would you believe, working on removal, uh, parents' uh, removal company, family removal company, heavy duty furniture, and my elbows have never been the same since. Up here, we have, if you remember our previous pallet cabin one, there it is, the Starbucks, as I called it, the Starback reel there. And you can see, <clears throat> see, it's on a, on a fly rod. Fly rods always have the reels at the bottom there. Very, very long, look at the length of this one. Very long. I never realised, I have to say, that they had this much old tackle in here, which is very nice to see. They've got mould pliers. Here we go, I have one of these. Is that a Rapid X? It says, Dave <coughs> Stewart Trotting Rod. Yes, there you go. And a Rapid X reel, actually donated by Dave Stewart. I had one of those, there's a little adjuster there, and caught many a fine barbel, ledgering a swim feeder and float fishing as well. And you would sit right next to the rod, you'd have the reel really, really close to you. The rod would go round and you just pick up and your thumb would go over the top of that to stop the fish taking and eventually, you know, you'd be straight onto the fish with direct drive. There's another Mitchell. These were the reels of yesteryear. You go out there, if this was serviced, you would catch fish on that today. Well, I wouldn't because I can't get fishing. There's too many people fishing. I can't find a swim. Not where it's going. Look at that one. This is called, just so guys know, this is called a Devon Minnow. And it slides down the line. It's, it's, it's quite light. These are quite light. I, I want to say they made a ball, so maybe they're not. Somebody who's an expert can tell, tell us. But those would spin with these veins, and I think they use lighter ones like this, so they actually, you know, if you had a lead or something with it, the lead would bump on the bottom. Okay, so the lead's just bumping around in the current, and being a lighter wood, it would be about, I'm going to say, six inches up which is in the salmon's face. So if you can imagine, this is a giant salmon. Here's the gravel bottom there, there. The fish is lying probably just very close to it, okay? So if you had a lure, it would be down here at this level, wouldn't it? So the fish itself would be laying from the base up here. It might be, I'm gonna say a foot higher. It depends in the current. It could be six inches or a foot higher than the gravel bed. So if you've got a lure in their face, you have much more chance of getting a strike. And I believe that's why they use more of a, I'm gonna call it, say a buoyant lure like these Devon minnows and of course you get metal ones as well plenty of salmon 42 40 39 40 45 <coughs> this one I was born 1951 and that one is 39 31 30 big fish big fish And of course, you'd have to have one of these creels, especially trout fishing would have them. You could put your tackle in there. But the reason they used to use them trout fishing is because that would keep the, the air could circulate through the wicker and that would keep your catch, i.e. small brown trout, small rainbow trout, whatever you call, they would keep them cool with the airflow through there. So that's um, handy if you were taking it up. Now we've got cooler boxes, blue ice freezer packs and everything. Remember these two people. These are the bait droppers, old brass ones. <laughs> you know me. I still got one. And what you what you do it? There'd be a loop on the top of this normally, and your maggots would go in there, like this. You put your maggots in there, flip it shut. I try and do this one-handed. Close it up with a hook. You cast it out, and it would sink to the bottom. That flap would come open. And all the maggots would tumble down here, across the bottom of the gravel. And to be honest, I was fishing in the pipe swim once. And um, because everybody used a lot of maggots in, I mean, there was a period when I think they had a maggot ban down here because it was so efficient. But when you were allowed to use the maggots, which was, I say, in the 65 onwards when I was down here, people would get 
this is what you used to pay. It was it used to be 30 shillings, 30 shillings for a gallon of maggots. That was from Davis's tackle shop at the top. 30 shillings for a gallon. That's what my I didn't pay it. I was a teenager. Daddy paid it. But Dad, we all have that between the two of us, a maggot. And you pile these maggots in. Not a lot of ground bait, but most of it will be put in straight maggots with this. The fish will be boiling around this. So what I did was tie a rig off here once. And that was in the famous pipes room. And I got, I think it was five chub and a couple of barbel by using the bait dropper with a hook off the bait dropper. Because obviously they got caught in return. They got pretty cute. And it says there, oh, oh, this was the Newark Creel originally owned and used by the legendary F.W.K. Wallace on his many visits to the royalty. There's a bit of historic uh, interest there. A nice creel. Look at this one. This is a Grice and Young of Christchurch. I remember those. Mark II reel, look. Just so you know. That's obviously collectible because it's on a piece of very, very strong cable, the like of which I would use possibly for Paul Beagle Sharks in the £400 range. Beautiful reel. You know, heavy, but machined, absolutely superb. And there's one called a, a Speedia. Maybe that was Ken Keynes' bailiff's one, original original reel, I don't know. Again, centre pin. Now, you tend to think they'd be using for salmon, uh, for float fishing, but a lot of the time they would use those um, for sending baits down salmon fishing. In that period I was down here, they used to use prawns as well, and there was some big sea trout, 10, 10 pound or upwards sea trout down here. So there you go, people. Bit of history. Now, of course, I've got to try and salvage something out of the day. Look at all these lures. I think they called those kidney spoons. I remember those for pike as well. All this comes flooding back. Or was it crow quills, those, or swan quills? And some of the old permits, I used to collect all those as well. Yeah, I'd pay 10 shillings to fish. It's all changed now. So thanks to the people down here at David's Tackle Shop for letting me come in and have a photograph here. Hopefully it all comes out. Even the nets, look, even the way the nets are, are made nowadays. Uh, years ago compared with nowadays. Cane handle, all whipped in here. I bet that's seen some fish through that net. <clears throat> I want to call that an intrepid envoy. Can you guys read that? I can't read that up there. One of the first reels I ever had. And there's some more of those Devons. The Devon minnows there, you see. Yeah, it's interesting. It's nice to see all this stuff that's kept. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. I'm still looking. Um, I'm going to try and stop on the way back and just try and salvage. Be on the last day. This is just a couple, a couple of grayling or something. I don't know where I'm going to go. Maybe, maybe on the itching somewhere. But it's barreling through here. But I'm hoping it's not going to be too flooded. Anyway, this follows on from my old tackle that I showed you myself in the famous pallet cabin. So I'm going to pack up, move out, and get a couple of shots of the river. I don't know what those guys are going to catch today. It's barreling through and the wind is horrendous. But listen, it's the last day of the season. I know exactly what it's like. That's why I'm out as well. River's going to be shut as we speak in 2019. They still have a close season, which incidentally, I think we should have. I think we need a close season to give the fish a rest, the banks a rest. Give the wildlife a bit of peace and quiet. And of course, come the glorious June the 16th, we can get back on the rivers again. A clock's ticking. It closes at midnight. It is, oh my God, 12 o'clock, 12 hours till closure. I can assure you I won't be on the river at 12 o'clock tonight. It's amazing how many of us River watch, and I can tell you exactly. There's the steps. I was about two concrete stanchions down there back in the 60s when I got my first bubble, right in the middle there, trotting a float down. If I could dig the picture out, I'll show you, but I doubt I can. That wind is horrific. And the water's very, very coloured. The thing is, people, with the rivers, a lot of the rain comes down, so let's call it Salisbury Plain area. That used to take two days. So if you have heavy rain up in Salisbury, it would take two days to come down before it really colours and floods down here. I guess it's pretty much the time, same time scale. So if you do fish rivers like this, especially the Dorset Stour, 
or a Hampshire Avon, do check the rainfall up in the Salisbury area way upland because that's how long it takes for it to get down to here because the royalty and say throop fishery its sister one over on the Dorset Stour um, you don't want to come all this way and then find it's flooded out best to phone the tackle shop first wow it's whistling I'm going to get in the car okay so I'm on the banks of the river now it is indeed if I walk forward I don't have polarizing glasses but you can see very shallow very clear fast you get a piece of weed going past there it's going down fast. I'm looking for just a slightly deeper piece, I guess down the middle. And I'm going to get some feed going in. Urban fishing for bait, basically anything. Bait wise, I've got some ground bait just there mixed up as you can see, a little bit of ground bait. You might get wind of the mic there, I don't know. I've got some uh, four mils or two mil pellets, those are actually. In there, the two mils, put a few in there. I could put those in loose like this as well. Not quite sure how fast they sink. Uh, they probably need soaking. But then you never know, in a river like this, there might be uh, dace and stuff coming up on the top. And to get the uh, maggots down, I just got white maggots. I'm going to put them in with the ground bait like this. Just to get them going. Well, <laughs> get it going. Be aware, with a wind like this, you don't get bait blowing in the water or indeed the lids of your containers no other anglers here at the moment there we go so I've mixed those mixed it all in like that I'm going to squeeze just like a light, light pellet like that and just basically larrap it in down the middle there just in this trying to get a sort of constant flow because fast rivers like this let's get that out there They've got to take it as it zooms past their face or it's gone. So that's the general, it's not like a slow build up in a slack of water. So I know I'm going to get through pretty well all this bait. And what happens is it sinks to the bottom, I probably can't show you here. Chuck it up there. As it sinks to the bottom, it should catch in amongst those pieces of weed and that'll slow it up. Just so you can see it going out there. I see it catching the weed, that'll slow it and it will tumble down. So I'm starting at the top end and then I might work my way further downstream. Hopefully I don't get pestered by people asking me, am I fishing or feeding the ducks? As you can see, the ducks are cracking away. They've definitely got the impression they're being fed. There he goes. I can work my way all the way down to that bridge. Right, let's get maggots on the hook. See what we can do. Tackle, I've got my Avon rod. Got my Aero GT, whatever it says. It's worn off, double O. Probably a 3000. Avon rod, Avon float. Size 14 hook here, 2BB. And the much and many times repaired Avon float. Going to put a bunch of maggots on so they can see it. That's the theory. I'm going to put my bait tin on top. Always watch uh, all your stuff behind you guys. Gears, if you're in a park, you don't know who's wandered around and you get engrossed in fishing and you can't always watch what's going on, can you? If you get my drift, it's urban fishing. It's not out in the country. What I'm going to do is bring my bait down here a bit. And I've got a sideways peripheral view, if you know what I'm saying. The wind is luckily, I've come over this side because the wind's off my back. Probably take a couple of trots down, see if there's any dace at home. I think it's going to be too fast for roach, so I could get dace. Probably the dreaded minnows, at least I won't get dogfish. Of course conditions against me like this I might even get nothing As you can see I'm letting that go way way down it's harder and harder to see the float I'm letting it go down under its own steam there also gives me a chance to lay the line for the next trot down Bit of squeak in this reel, it needs a bit of grease. And what I do is I start fairly shallow and then I'm going to get a bit deeper as I go. A pretty little spot. I 
don't see anywhere that's slightly slacker. I'm looking for a slight pause in the pace of the current there going down. But because we've had so much rain, I don't think I'm going to find that. I think it's going to be zipping down there pretty quickly. Well, guys, I'm moved again. I've got no bites on the river itching. I met one awesome army member. Wasn't fishing, just recognising. Come up and had a chat. And now coming down to the Lucky River Way. But it's cranking through. Got a tinge of colour in it. I tried just up there by that pipe, which is normally a bit of a bank of swim. Nothing. So I'm going to move downstream. I've got one hour on the car park. Just one of those days, isn't it? Probably should have looked at the forecast and the river conditions and thought, forget it. But of course, you get sucked in by all the enthusiasm of other anglers as well. And you think, yeah, just go for it. It's not as bad as you think it is. Right, this is another one swim one here. Oh, here I go, the wind is off my back. I've got to get rid of the ground bait. I've got uh, 45 minutes left of fishing time. I've only put one hour on the car park. I nearly, nearly got two, and I thought, you know what? Don't do it, Graham. I can always go back and get another ticket if it suddenly goes absolutely berserk on me, which I don't think it will. I'm not going to waste a lot of maggots because all my, all my maggots I freeze down. Oh, that wasn't sensible, Graham. Didn't put the lid on these. We have a good old feed of the scratchings pellets, which are now everywhere in the bottom of the tackle box. They've got to be cleared out because we all know Mr. Mouse will be in there. Now the river season's shut as they chew my hat up as well, actually. Right, let's have a run through. I've got double rubbers on this time, trying to stop it. So I've got three maggots on. I think the last film I hear ages ago was trying to catch up with a centre pin. In the end I lucked out, but I'm not sure if I'm going to luck out today, I've got to be honest. It's looking grim. This is the fourth river I've looked at. Just a dace, just a roach, anything, just to save that blank on the last day of the season. It all looks good with a tinge of colour. Generally, it will fish... Uh, Fish quite, uh, could have been a bite, could have been a minnoso. Slightly slack bit over the back of those rushes. I think they're minnows. I had this trouble in this swim before. Because every time you strike for a minnow and miss it, it spooks the other fish. They know you're there. I'm way down the back there now, running it through. Sometimes pick a roach up back down there. And it's gone through totally undisturbed. People are getting no bites at all. I think I'm going to take a gamble and walk all the way downstream where I know the current does slow a bit and there should be some overhanging bushes. It means I've got to use all of my fishing time up travelling and it will be like a dozen or so casts before I've got to start working my way back. But I've got no choice. It looks like I'm on a blank. So wasted journey guys, I've gone all the way up there, blasted by the wind, footpaths closed, I've got a huge big chained off area, diggers or whatever. So I'm just going to come back and finish 10 or 15 minutes along. I started up there, I'm going to go down here, it's just a slight change in pace there. Uh, but I feel I'm on a blank, but listen, I've got to see this last uh, 15 minutes out. Technically people, I have indeed saved the blank. And look at the state this is, look. I mean a blank saver. So the last day of the season, I haven't blanked. Thank goodness for a minnow. See you next season. The wind is just blasting the float everywhere. I think this is what it is, messing this fish up. I think this is pressure system with the storms. It's definitely doing something untoward because everywhere I've been, I haven't seen anybody catch a fish yet. Well, me, a minnow. My goodness. They're getting on the, uh, scraping the bottom of the fishy barrel, as we should say. A fish, a fish. My kingdom for a fish. Nearly went in then. I have indeed a nice day to finish with, thank goodness. Do you know what? A, a lovely day, but I didn't even see the bite. I am not gonna lie. 
I thought it was a minnow. Look at this, nice day there. Now that's made my day. Could have made life so much easier for me, but it's just nice on a river trip to get something in. Last day of the season, three maggots, and it's a nice fish to go home with. Look at that one. Lovely jobbly. There we go. Success in every packet. Just. Well, I was really pleased to catch a minnow and a dace. <laughs> so pleased, so pleased. Oh, about 40 quid of the petrol. But still, listen boys, here at the Tony Dawson Fishing Show, we show you it is real. That's what happens to people that go fishing quite a lot. It's tough over here sometimes. Anyway, hit that subscribe button on TA Fishing and TA Outdoors. Don't forget to hit the notification bell and we'll get back to you. But before I close, there's a play out. I thought that river was up and pushing. <laughs> don't, don't make me laugh. I'll show you flooded. Check this footage out. Meanwhile, we'll see you guys in the next film.